doctors found that I had sustained over 73 physical injuries, including bleeding in my ears and bleeding in my urine. They had offered me £20,000. They had upped their offer to £60,000 if I was to drop the case. Take the money. I want them to pay for what they did to me so that they don't do it to anyone else. I have no job. I have no income. I'm in prison. I lost everything. This amount of money can help me to stand on my two feet again. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. On Tuesday, 2nd of December 2003, at my then home in Tooting, South London, my home was raided by up to 20 police officers and over the next 40 minutes or so they subjected me to an ordeal of physical, verbal, religious and sexual abuse despite me offering no resistance whatsoever. By the time I reached Charing Cross Police Station doctors found that I had sustained over 73 physical injuries including bleeding in my ears and bleeding in my urine. Over the next few years, while I was still in prison, I pursued a legal case against the police officers. In March of 2009, that case came to a conclusion. A few days before the trial began at the High Court in London, my lawyers, my solicitor Fiona Murphy, and my barrister Philippa Kaufman, these two ladies, they came to Long Larton Prison to see me. And when they came to see me, they said that the police have made a last minute offer to you. Prior to that, they had offered me £20,000 to settle the case out of court, and I had refused. This time now, they had upped their offer to £60,000 if I was to drop the case. Fiona and Philippa said to me that it is our view that you should take the money, settle the case out of court because it's possible that next week at trial the judge may not believe you, he may believe the police officers so you may lose the case and even if you win the case and the judge believes you you may get £10,000 or £9,000 in compensation it's a large amount of money. If you were to leave prison tomorrow, then it would help you to stand on your feet. So I told them that let me think over it over lunchtime. So at lunchtime, I went back to my cell and I made dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and I put my hands up and I said, Ya Allah, I said, you know that for me, pursuing this case has always been about accountability. That I want them to pay for what they did to me I don't want them to get away with it so that they don't do it to anyone else and it has never been about money for me on the other hand I have no job I have no income I'm in prison I lost everything when I came to prison if I was to leave prison tomorrow then this amount of money can help me to stand on my two feet again I don't know what to do, please help me. And then I closed my eyes and I picked up the Quran and I opened it and I put my finger and it landed on Surah Anfal, Surah 8 verses 7 and 8, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was talking about the Battle of Badr, a battle in which the Prophet والسلام, fought. There were two parties. One was the unguarded caravan and one was the army. And the Prophet ﷺ, he wanted, and the, the Muslims, they wanted the easy option. They wanted to go and to attack the caravan and take their property back. 
But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَإِذْ يَعِدُكُمُ اللَّهُ إِحْدَى الطَّائِفَتَيْنِ أَنَّهَا لَكُمْ وَتَوَدُّونَ أَنَّ غَيْرَ ذَاتِ الشَّوْكَةِ تَكُونُ لَكُمْ And when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala promised you one of the two parties, when he promised you one of the two parties that they would be yours, but you wanted the easier option. You wanted the easier option, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he had a different agenda which was to establish the truth and to make the evil doers to make them apparent so you can you can read the i won't read the whole verses surah number eight surah anfal verses seven and eight it's like allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was saying to me his answer was clear reject the money and go to trial and trust in me and everything will be okay. I went back in the afternoon and I said to my lawyers that I am more sure today that I want to go to trial on Monday, even if I lose, even if the judge doesn't believe me. I'm more sure today that I want to reject this money and I want to go to trial because I want them to be held accountable for what they did to me. So the following week on Monday, I went to the High Court in London. I was taken there in a prison van. The trial began and at the end of the first day, the police officers, they refused to give evidence. The police officers who attacked me, they were too afraid to give evidence. And so the police lawyers, they ended the case and they admitted full liability for what they did to me. They said, we admit that we subjected Mr. Ahmed to a serious, gratuitous and prolonged attack and that he offered no resistance whatsoever. Mm -hmm. We admit that we caused him all of these injuries and we are also going to pay him uh, £60,000 in compensation. So here I was, I wanted the easy option but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had a different agenda. Sometimes in our lives we are asked to make choices and decisions. It's natural for the human being to want the easy option, the one which is the the one with least hassle. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He always has an agenda at play. He always has His own agenda, His own plan. And sometimes that plan is not the one which appears easy. But at the end, just like He did, at the, with the Battle of Badr, just like he did in my case, you will find that the option that Allah made you undertake, the hard option, that is the one that was not only the best for you, but it was also the best for, um, it, it was also the best for Islam. So by me taking that advice, and I was confused. I didn't know what to do to accept the money and or, or should I uh, go to um, uh, go to trial. I went to trial. I took that risk. I took that gamble, and it all worked out in my favor. I was still, I still won that case, and they still gave me the compensation and they admitted liability, which if I had settled out of court, they would not have done that. والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته أخي أنت حر وراء السدود أخي أنت حر بتلك القيود إذا كنت بالله مستعصما فماذا يضيرك كيد العبيد فماذا يضيرك كيد العبيد أخي أنت حر